Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. God is not requiring you to be strong in your own strength. I hate to break it to you, but your strength cannot outdo God's strength. Welcome back, everyone. You are tuned into another episode of Create with Kendra, a place where you can be inspired, challenged and changed. Today's episode, I am going to start it off just a little bit different out of obedience to God. This is going to be a topic that has has weight to it, and I don't want to just rush into it, but I understand that we all need to be prepared for it. This is a word from God, and it's not my own, but I pray that you are able to receive what the Lord wants to share today. So that being said, with all minds clear, Father God, thank you so much for your goodness, your kindness, your mercy. Thank you for this day that you have given us, regardless of if if it started off good or bad, God, the fact that we have um, lungs that have air in them and that we are above ground is a blessing. God, I pray that you forgive us for all of our sins. Forgive us for our offenses, things that we knew that we did against you and things that we did not know that we did against you. God, forgive us for treating our brothers and sisters less than they deserve, God. Help us be better for you. Help us be better for ourselves and the people around us. Lord, I'm praying for everyone that is listening to this particular message that you prepare their hearts to receive the word from on high. Whatever it is that they are dealing with, whatever it is that they're battling with, God, I pray that you alert their ears and that they are able to receive your word as I deliver it. God, I'm even asking for that same blessing for myself. This is not my message. This is not my word. But God, I pray that you encourage me through this. God, be praised, be glorified. We give you everything that we have to honor you as the Lord of our lives. God bless it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, y'all. So let's get to it. There is a war going on in the spirit. I don't know if you've ever heard this term before, but the devil is attacking on a large international scale all the way down to family units and he's not letting up he's using every tactic every weapon everything he can think of to destroy God's people and it is not the time for us to be oblivious to what it is happening in the spiritual realm You don't necessarily have to see angels and demons going head to head to know that there is an attack. You know it's happening when your body is being attacked. When your loved ones are being attacked, even when there is confusion, chaos, and strife in your life, you know that this is an attack of the enemy, that it is not just a worldly thing, a carnal thing. This is not just happening between people, but there is a struggle in the spiritual realm. And I don't know about you, but I'm fed up. This probably will not be the light and fluffy message that you are expecting, but I am just so sick and tired of the devil thinking that he can just roll up on me roll up on people that I love and just start destroying things. And what the devil is not going to do is back me up in a corner and have me surrender. That being said, it's time to fight. By no means am I talking about physically fighting, putting hands on somebody by no means. And if that is what you're thinking about, you're going to miss this message. So I'm praying for you right now that your heart is prepared to receive what kind of fight that we are up against. People of God, we have to fight with strategy. And the only way to do so is to fight in the spirit. Let's head on over to Ephesians chapter 6. We're going to read verses 10 through 17, and we're going to take our time to unpack this. 
Ephesians 6, um, starting at verse 10, it says, finally, be strong in the Lord in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God so you can take a stand against the schemes of the devil. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, against the spiritual forces of evil and heavenly realms. Verse 13, therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground after you have done everything to stand. We're going to stop right there. and We're going to go back and unpack this. Finally, brothers and sisters, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. God is not requiring you to be strong in your own strength. I hate to break it to you, but your strength cannot outdo God's strength. And the way that God moves is strategic and it is powerful and the good thing about it is he's saying you don't have to go in your own strength I have the best strength there is and you can go in my strength and in my power verse 11 says put on the full armor of God that you will be able to stand against the schemes of the devil when God is telling us to put on his armor, there is going to be a fight. There, When you see armor, there is an indication that there is about to be a battle, a war, a fight, some sort of conflict. And he reminds us in verse 12 that the, the battle that we are in is not flesh. It is not blood. It is not physical. If you run up on me and you think you're doing something, you're not. If I run up on you and think I'm doing something, I'm not. But the Bible says in Ephesians 6, chapter, um, um, chapter 6, verse 12, it says that the struggle is against the rulers and the authorities and the powers of darkness. This is a spiritual battle, y'all. You thinking people cutting up in your life. It's not the people. They are being used and manipulated by the spirit of the enemy. And let me tell you this. Some may be listening to this and saying, you know what, Kendra, it's not that deep. But let me tell you. The devil is sneaky conniving and seamless and when I say that I'm telling you the devil can get over on you if you are not in the word of God when you go back to Genesis and you are reminded of how Adam and Eve fell from God's grace we see the serpent coming to Eve and trying to convince her you know what if you take of this fruit you have the knowledge of good and evil and you'll be just like God. Yeah, but not the way that God has, has it set up for his own perspective. She took of the fruit and now she was exposed to good and evil, just like he said. However, he never mentioned death behind the bite. The devil will have you twisted in knots and kinks and I mean, he'll have you tied up and and, and give you what you want to hear, but he won't mention the death that's attached to the bite. He won't mention the poison that is attached to the encounter. So when it comes to the battles and struggles that we face in our life. And we're thinking, oh my gosh, what is going on? It is a spiritual battle, y'all. Verse 13 says, therefore put on the full armor of God. So when the day of evil comes, you'll be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything to stand, the only thing God is requiring us to do when we are in this battle is to stand. 
the fact that he he provides the strength, he provides the might, and he provides the armor. The only thing we have to do is stand in it. Gosh, that sounds like a fixed fight to me. You mean to tell me, God, you understand what this battle is going to look like. You know what the outcome is going to be. You know the hits, you know the blows, you know everything about it. And the only thing you're requiring me to do is to trust you and to stand firm. Let's continue, y'all. Verse 14 says, stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist and the breastplate of righteousness. And with your feet fitted with readiness to come from the gospel of peace. In addition to all of this, take up the shield of faith, which can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Verse 17 says, take up the helmet of salvation and the take up the helmet of salvation and the word of the spirit, which is the word of God. Let me read that one again. Verse 17, take up the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit. There we go. Which is the word of God. Now I want to backtrack to verse 16 when it talks about this shield of faith. Y'all look, you may have even used a couple of these armor pieces and had not known it, but we are going to learn about it today and we are going to put this armor on so we can fight. When it comes to the shield in verse 16, the shield of faith, it says this this particular shield extinguishes all of the flaming arrows of the evil one. That means your faith will literally block every single arrow that the devil tries to shoot at you. Glory to God. And even verse 17, the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. How can we fight without our sword? How can you go to battle without your armor? It makes no sense. We have. Let's see what we have. The belt of truth. We have the the breastplate of righteousness, our feet with the readiness of the gospel of peace, a shield of faith, the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. It seems like the things that we are fighting for, God already gave us a promise on the other end. It's like when God gives you a word, when God gives you a vision of something, all hell breaks. And it happens because the enemy knows that if you get to the other side of this fight, he lost. But his job is to distract you and to and to discourage you and to defeat you. But not today. We are going to fight in the spirit. But what I love about God is that when he gives you that word and when he gives you that vision, it's to encourage you. Because if I know that I have a promise on the other side of this, yo, I'm going to go in. If God gave me a promise and his promises are yea and amen, every promise he has, he keeps it. So me knowing my God and how he come through, I'm going to have to fight through this. And believers, I'm sorry. And for those that aren't believers, I need y'all to know this. Just because we rock with God don't mean we're going to be silent when the enemy comes. Let's just put that out there. We are not meek, lonely, and weak. Not at all. We are soldiers in the army of the Lord. We are battling brides of Christ. This is nothing for the weak, if anything. And if you are a believer, you have to learn how to fight in the spirit. When you're fighting, we have to also understand that we cannot afford to fight like the world. Why? Because you will lose. There have been times where I wanted to handle things Kendra's way. 
plenty of times where I wanted to handle (laughs) things Kendra's way. And God told me to hold my peace. Do you know how hard that is when you feel like you can fix somebody or fix a situation and God tells you to be quiet? Don't respond. Don't look. Don't even part your lips. (laughs) I'm still even speechless to that because to my flesh, it doesn't make sense. If I'm going to defend me, I'm going to defend me. But when God tells you to hold your peace, that is <laughs> that is proof that you are fighting in the spirit. <laughs> Y'all, it's hard. But God won't leave you. And he'll give you what you need in order to be equipped to fight the right way. It is important to trust God in the fight. Because he sees the ending before it begins. When God is by your side, you cannot lose. And the great thing about, oh, thank you, Jesus. The great thing about God, where do I even begin? (laughs) Is that, y'all, we fight from a place of victory. Do you realize that? That God already fixed the fight for you? When Jesus... When Jesus died on the cross, he took all of, he took everything for us. And not only that, but he had the victory. And so when we fight, it's not that we have to really fight with our own might, going back to Ephesians 6, but we're fighting with his might, his power, his armor, and we already have the victory. Before the battle begins, you already have the victory. What? That's cheating. No, it ain't. That's God. And that's how we fight in the spirit. And I really want y'all to, I really want to encourage somebody because it's so easy to pop off the way you want to pop off. But there is no victory in that. You will surely lose. You will surely find defeat. But if you fight in the spirit, and you fight according to how God wants us to put up this fight, you will fight from a place of victory. Come on, fix fight. Romans 8 and 31 says, what then shall we say in response to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Y'all, if you really trying to check for me, let me just remind you. If you come for me, you got to be ready to come, come after God too. And that in itself is not fair because I am protected. I am covered. I am secure because of him and because of my position and how I'm fighting. I want to share this last scripture to encourage people that are in a fight fighting for their lives or the lives of a loved one and that may feel anxiety or stress or heartache, unrest, discomfort, whatever it may be. I want to read and remind you what the word of the Lord says in Psalms chapter 27. And it reads, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. For whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even mine enemies and my foes came upon me to eat my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though a host shall encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war shall rise against me, in this will I be confident. One thing that I desire of the Lord that I will seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord, to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me 
in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me up upon a rock and now shall my head be lifted up above mine enemies round about me. Therefore, I will offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. My God today, the Lord is my light. He is my salvation. He is my safety. He is my refuge. He is my fortress. He is everything that he needs to be in order to protect you and me, period. When your enemies are after you, some of y'all may know what that is. Some of y'all may not. Just keep living. When your enemies are after you, God will hide you. You don't have to stress You don't have to worry. You don't have to be anxious. My God today. Thank you, Lord. You don't have to do anything but rest in him. He sees when you're weary. He sees when you're tired. He knows everything that you're feeling. Allow yourself to feel and go to the father and rest in him. Thank you, Lord, so much. I hope and I pray that this was a word of encouragement for somebody out there that is being attacked, that is going through something so hard and you don't see your way out. I want to remind you that it's a fixed fight. You don't have to work on your own strategy and your own means of getting things done. You can rest Assure that God will protect you. You can rest assured that you are fighting from a place of victory as long as you stand firm in him. Have faith in him. The devil cannot win unless you give up. Let us pray. God, I thank you for this word. I thank you for the sweetness of this word. God, I'm praying for everyone that is dealing with an attack on their lives or on a loved one's life. God, I'm praying for the spirit of peace to encamp around them. God, send your legions of angels to protect them, God. And every attack, every snare, every arrow of the enemy, God, I pray that you distinguish it right now in the name of Jesus. God, we cast it down and we send it back to the pits of hell. We are victorious in you. You are a mighty God. You are a sovereign God. And you are a God that has never lost a case, never lost a battle, never lost a war. And because we are fighting from your side, we fight from a place of victory and not defeat. God, keep us encouraged to keep going through to get to your promise. God, we rebuke the enemy on every hand in the name of Jesus. He is a lie and a defeated foe he is. God, we speak victory. We speak victory over the lives that are listening to this. In the name of Jesus, God, I pray right now for peace. As they sleep, as they walk, they will not worry. Anxiety will not overtake them in the name of Jesus. God, have your way. I feel your presence right now, God. I feel your presence right now, God. Lord, allow us to fight in the spirit, God. Allow us to fight with strategy in the name of Jesus. Allow us to fight the way you want us to do it, God. Allow us to fight on our knees in prayer. Allow us to fight, oh God, with turning our plates away and fasting and seeking you in the name of Jesus. Let us be giant slayers in the spirit. Let us be warriors in the spirit. God, we've already won before the battle began. We thank you for being sovereign and all powerful. Continue to watch over us and teach us how to war in the spirit. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Oh, God, thank you. Y'all, I'm full. I don't even know what to do. I'm full. 
Ah, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. God, you're so good. Thank you, Jesus. Y'all, I might have to end on this note because I'm about to go in (laughs) by myself. Um, If you've enjoyed this episode, um, share this with somebody that needs to hear this about how to war in the spirit. God versus your enemy. The enemies can't touch you when you got God. So um, y'all stay prayed up. Stay prayed up. Um, I love you so much, everyone, and be blessed.